Welcome to And That's When I Realized, the truth and comedy of midlife with me, Susan Dolce. And me, Leon Dyer. We are two good friends navigating the twists and turns of that middle part of life, and we are laughing our way through it. Don't get us wrong. It's not all that funny all the time. There's so much we are unprepared for. Adult children, changing bodies, aging parents. We want you to know that you are not alone in these challenges. So sit back, get a front row seat as we share true life stories with a fresh perspective and just a pinch of irreverence. And that's when I realized it starts now. Hey everyone, and welcome to And That's When I Realized. I'm Leon Dyer. And I'm Susan Dolce. <laughs> and this is a show where we're tackling the truth and the comedy of midlife. So Susan and I are best friends, and we get together over Zoom every Friday afternoon to share our week. And we share the joys and the challenges, the laughs, and we discuss all those things that friends share. So I don't know about you, but we thought by the time we hit our mid-50s, we'd kind of have it all figured out. <laughs> but it turns out there's a whole lot we did not expect. So today's show is exactly that, and we're very excited. We are talking about the hidden toxins that could be impacting your health. And we have a guest today, Cheryl Meyer. So grab a cup of coffee, a glass of iced tea, and join us. So um, I've had Cheryl on uh, three things I've learned and uh, an incredible wealth of information and her bio is super extensive. So I'm going <laughs> to give you a snippet because we yeah. want to get to talking <laughs> and she, and you will know by the time this show is over why she has this extensive bio. Mm -hmm. Cheryl has a BA from UC Berkeley and is a health coach from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. She is an award-winning international best-selling author health coach, speaker, local TV host, and guest podcaster. Cheryl is the author of four books on health and toxins and has a podcast titled, It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health on Voice of America. And she also has a book. One of her four books is by the same name, It Feels Good to Feel Good, 
learn to eliminate toxins, reverse inflammation, and feel great again. Cheryl, so excited to have you back on this show. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here again. I love talking about this. I love bringing awareness to other people of all the things I didn't know when I woke up one morning and couldn't move because everything in my body hurt. I don't want anybody else to have to go there, but even if you do go there, that's not where your story has to end. It certainly wasn't where mine ended. Right. So Cheryl, I, I am a true fan of yours and I'm almost starstruck. Um, I highly recommend everyone after you're done listening and watching the podcast to click on and um, get Cheryl's free download on her. Um, is that still being offered? I probably should have asked. Yeah, it is. The it is. Okay. And the link yeah. is on the description for the, I, I, I put it there and she's got so many awesome perfect freebies. So yeah. Okay. So when I, one thing, um, when I first started my weight loss journey, um, I would wake up every morning. And um, so this was oh, like seven years ago. And I would have that moment where I was in bed and I had, I had to get up and I would, I would, first thing I would have to do is most people do in their midlife, they have to use the bathroom first. And so I would cringe because I knew that when I would get out of bed, my feet would hurt so bad that it would be very difficult for me to walk. So I'm like, okay, how long can I lie in bed, hold my bladder before I have to endure the pain of walking across the floor? And it wasn't until, and I went to many doctors and I was seeing an orthopedic and then I was on a pain med and then I was, um, went to OT and then I went to PT and all these things and things just kept adding up. It wasn't until I started losing the weight and removing certain items from my diet, that pain went away. Yeah, we don't realize how much power we have over the pain and it has nothing to do with finding a magic pill. Exactly. So I was so, that happened somewhat to you. You were laying in bed and you couldn't get out of bed. Yours yeah. wasn't, yeah. I actually had had several examples of my body poking me, trying to tell me that something called toxic load was building up. I was an entrepreneur. I was a solopreneur. I had my own jewelry business. I was traveling overseas all the time and selling all the big, big box retailers a line of silver jewelry that I was creating. So I was working 24 seven. I was not paying any attention to my own self care. I was eating on the fly. And when I get home, I was eating as fast as I'd be working all day. And I was eating whatever was handy. And it certainly wasn't geared towards health. So my body started complaining. I started getting random rashes. I started getting random aches and pains. Mm -hmm. I was getting brain fog. I was waking up more tired when I woke up in the morning than when I went to bed at night. All of these are signs of inflammation, but they went past my brain so quick, I didn't even stop to think about them. And you would have thought that I would have paid attention when I woke up one morning and my tongue and my lips and my eyes were almost swollen shut. And I'd had a guest and she did me a favor and she did my laundry and she went way high on a shelf and pulled down laundry sheets, which I had realized were making me rash, but she had used them in my laundry and I overreacted, way overreacted, which is where all this reaction came from. And you would have thought then I might've explored what the heck was going wrong with my body, but it was three weeks later when I woke up and I literally could not move. Every joint, every muscle, everything in my body hurt. And so I went to my conventional doctor and four times she ran a different round of tests and she finally came back and said, Cheryl, good news, there's nothing wrong with you. I said, that's absolutely ludicrous because something is wrong with my body. I am in pain and you don't know what it is, I'm gonna go find it. And I was lucky because I'd had a team that had worked for me for 20 years. So I just turned my business over to them. I would go in once a week and just tell them they were doing a great job. And then I started researching and I, I didn't even know what I was looking for. I tripped into the functional medical community and I'll explain why that's different. But at the time they were running 19 different symposiums with multiple doctors. And the first thing that caught my attention is all of them had become functional because they'd gotten sick themselves 
and couldn't help themselves. So they went for additional education because they knew if they couldn't help themselves, they weren't helping their patients. And so that caught my attention. And then I started writing down the words that were, they were continually using. I probably had something called leaky gut. I knew I had too much stress because friends had started pulling me aside and going, hey, stress accumulates and you're over the edge. And we're seeing it impact your personality and it's frazzling you. So you got to start doing something about that. Um, I knew I probably had a lot of toxins in my life. I had been bored in Pittsburgh and my father moved from there when I was four. And the joke was I was allergic to Pittsburgh. Well, it ends up I actually was because they used to oil the streets to keep the coal dust and the steel dust mm -hmm. down. And my father felt, he was a chemist, that if they kept me there, I wouldn't make it through life. So we picked up and we moved to California. And so I knew I probably had a lot of heavy toxic metals in my body, which they were talking about in these symposiums, and that other things were bothering me because of all the random rashes and now the other physical symptoms that were showing up on me. So that's where I started. I started with stress because one of the things that did show up in the test was that my cortisol was so low, I had utilized it all. I was borderline Addison's disease which meant that my cortisol was gone and I needed to find ways to reduce my stress and to replace my cortisol. My conventional doctor had no ideas as to how to do that. So that was something that I was researching. So I learned a series, I started doing a Korean form of yoga and I learned the Dr. Andrew Weil 478 breathing exercise, which is what mm -hmm. I use now twice a day. And to, I, I did find a functional doctor three years later that's mine that I go to. I drive an hour to her in LA traffic and I do his exercise the whole way out to her office because when I walk in the door, they take my blood pressure. I have the lowest pulse of any patient she's got and my blood pressure has come down from way too high to perfectly normal ranges because I do his exercises. So I knew that was working. But I also have come up with a series of I break up my day twice a day to let the top off my stress before it becomes toxic. It's one of the things that causes leaky gut. But then leaky gut is many things. A lot of it is from the chemicals and the sugar in the standard American diet, which means that you do not process and digest your food properly. So it's in these big chunks in your gut and it starts pushing up against the wall of your um, stomach, which is only one cell thick. And it breaks a little hole through it so that it can go into your blood because it can't pass. It's too big. And then your body does something really interesting. It mimics wherever you're weak and your autoimmune system clicks in and attacks that area. So for me, it was my joints and my muscles. For somebody else, it might be their thyroid and become Graves' disease or Hashimoto's. It could become Parkinson's. Diabetes type 2 is one of the autoimmune diseases. I already had that. And the problem with any of this is if it starts in your body, it becomes multiple syndromes if you don't deal with it. So I already had diabetes type 2. I had no idea that was connected to it all. And now I had this other thing going on that nobody knew what it was, but I knew it was something. Um, and then from there, I dug into the ewg.org website where they actually rate all the toxins in your life. First thing I looked up were my very expensive French cosmetics. They were a nine on a 10 point scale. So I literally was poisoning my body right through my skin. Whoa, did that open up my eyes. So I started collecting all the things I was using every day in my life and starting at the top and looking them all up. And if they were highly toxic, I started looking for replacement items. My head had been itchy for like 10 years. Ends up, I was sensitive to all kinds of toxic ingredients in my shampoo and my conditioner. So that all went, I found great replacements. I did everything. I, I actually stopped on products and started on food because it was logical to me that if I changed how clean I was eating, that would give my body the biggest boost. So 
I didn't know if it was right, wrong, or indifferent, but I started eating 100% organic. California had had GMOs on the ballot, and they did so much misinformation. It did not pass because we did not get the real skivvy. When I found out what GMOs were, I got more gray hairs because it's one of two things if it's in food. It's BT toxin which is grown right in the plant so that when the bug bites it, it blows up his little mm -hmm. body or it gets in your gut and blows up all your good gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. Not a good thing. The other kind of GMO is they make plants glyphosate ready. Glyphosate is Roundup. We mm -hmm. now know from two years ago that they've known for 25 years that that's a carcinogen. And yet mm -hmm. we've been spraying it on our lawns. I actually stopped my my. Um, gardener two years ago from spring. I said, it's bad for you as well as for me. No more. I said, think about it. We're dealing with weeds. I'd rather have weeds than die from the chemical. I'd <laughs> rather have weeds than you die from the chemical. Yeah. But they're still to this day spraying it on our food crops. So um, on my website, you'll find a card of everything that's genetically modified. You don't want that stuff. And things like soy are 95% genetically modified. Mm -hmm. Corn is 90% genetically modified. You need to be aware of what those things are because that poison is going in and interrupting your body. And essentially that morning when I woke up and I couldn't move, I was girl interrupted. I couldn't function. And so I was going to find ways to get my body back on keel. So I stopped eating GMOs. I started eating organic. I still was eating some standard American food, but the more I learned about the chemicals that are in all that processed food and fast food, which isn't real food at all, it just mimics real food, that all went. And so when you start swimming upstream against what everybody else eats, it's not easy. But one of the things that happened to me was I was in a toxic relationship with someone for 10 years. And he woke up one morning and said, I don't want to be with you if you don't feel good. I said, well, Ducky, mm -hmm. what would you like me to do about that? It was an angel's hand on my back. I took a class at 65 because I decided I wasn't very good at this relationship stuff from a woman named Alison Armstrong, who teaches men who love women and the women who love them. And in the middle of the class, she stopped and said, Cheryl, your problem is you're trying to fit into his life. I want a non-negotiable list of what you want from him, and you're not going to deviate from that. So I took the list, and I went on the old fogey dating site, and somebody answered in three days and lived 10 minutes away from me. And he is truly my soulmate, and I married him three years later. He now edits my books. He edits my podcasts and produces them. He's a statistician. So we're like opposite sides of the coin, but he went on my get well journey with me. Um, his wife of 42 years had just passed from cancer when I met him. So he said, I weigh way too much, but if you give me a chance, I'm probably the nicest man you ever met. And he is. This so is it. we're gonna, if, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick pause. Okay. Yeah, take it. We're gonna take a water break. <laughs> Drink water. It's important. Yeah, you're listening to, and that's when I realized today we are having a great interview with uh integrative health coach Cheryl Meyer. And uh we'll be right back in a little bit. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to And That's When I Realized. I'm Susan Dolce. I'm here with my co-host, my best bud, Leon Dyer. Today, we are interviewing integrative health coach Cheryl Meyer. She's authored four best-selling books. And um, we were talking all things um, uh, leaky gut <laughs> and, and cortisol, all the, all the nasties. But um, one of the things you said that you really wanted to talk about, and I, uh, I mean, I've heard of them. We wanted to talk more about organics. Uh, eating organically. And um, I know there's such a thing as the dirty dozen. Um, I think strawberries is one of them. <laughs> like, I, I wish I knew worst. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So would you, can you address that for us? Yeah. One of the things that EWG does, they're my hero, is every year they come out with a new list of what are the dirtiest of the vegetables. Because the first thing people will tell me when I speak is I can't afford to buy everything organic. I just can't afford it. So if you can't, 
<clears throat> then you start with what's called the dirty dozen. And those are the things that you avoid like the plague unless they're organic. And you can also find the, that card with the GMO card on my blog and also in another place on my website. But it does change every year. So even mm -hmm. if you get my card, know that it's going to change. The worst of them all is strawberries because they grow very close to the ground. So they really get drenched in pesticides and herbicides. But there's a whole list of things on there that you want to avoid unless it's organic and it's worth it. And it, one thing you have to ask yourself is number one, where are you spending your money? Do you really need that coffee on your way to work every morning that you're paying a fortune for when coffee is also a dirty crop and you could be making a great clean organic cup of coffee and taking it with you and saving that money and putting it towards something that's going to feed your body. But one of the first things that got my attention was from a scientist who said, you think organic is too expensive? Have you priced out cancer lately? Mm -hmm. Because what eating organic and getting away from all those nasty chemicals will do for you is it will promote health in your body, it will lower your health care costs, and it will help you avoid much more serious illnesses like mine down the road. And what my autoimmune disease ends up being is like a cousin to fibromyalgia. It's unnamed but there's 140 named ones, you don't want any of them because it's not a nice place to go to get an autoimmune disease or cancer or heart disease or diabetes or fatty liver. They're all connected to the toxins that you're putting in your body. Your liver is the clearing house for all the toxins and your liver does an incredible job until it can't keep up. And when it can't keep up, then it starts storing all those toxins in your fat. And then even if you're not eating toxins, it starts to leach them out into your body because it wants to get them out of your body and it can't find a place to do it. So it's going to do it one of three ways. You're going to get it out the bottom, you're going to get it out your kidneys, or it's going to come out your skin. Your skin actually takes toxins in and releases them. And believe it or not, all your skin issues, if you have any, whether it's psoriasis or eczema or acne, all of that is an inside job. It starts in your gut and it's a reaction of your liver to your body. So pay attention to the dirty dozen. There's also a place where you can actually look up how many chemicals are on any item that's mm -hmm. grown. And it's an eye opener, like a potato has 39 chemicals on it and half of them are neurotoxins, which means I don't wanna to get dementia. I'm 72, I'm kind of trying to hold on to my brain, but it will take away your ability to think properly and to act properly. And Parkinson's is a direct disease in connection with toxins. So you need to pay attention to all these things. And if you look up, you don't have to look them up all, but just look up maybe a half a dozen of them because it will tell you why you don't want to be putting that into your body. You don't want to be eating the standard American diet because that's what's going to lead you to getting a standard American disease. And it's going to take you to getting the standard American death. I have reversed all my pain because of how clean I live now. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, it's worth every second of it. Second thing people ask me when I speak is, aren't you deprived? My husband laughs. No, he said we were deprived when we felt lousy because of how we were eating. When you, mm -hmm. I believe that most Americans are running around feeling lousy and they don't even realize it. I was. Mm -hmm. And when you start to clean up, your body is very intuitive and very smart. And it starts to say, thank you. I'm happy. I feel good. I ask myself every morning when I get up and I look in the mirror, how do you feel today? Because if I am not feeling top notch, I adjust immediately because I am not going back. I'm like a little computer that goes through. What did I do yesterday that my body's not happy? What's causing that ache and pain? Why do I have that little whiny headache? And I adjust immediately because I'm not going to give it up. My first book tells you every single toxin that I found and what I replaced it with because I wanted to give everybody out there a head start because literally I had no clue what I was looking for when I started. My second book I wrote because my functional doctor asked me to write it and it's okay, I have a social life. I don't eat like anybody else. How do I live this way? And so it's, how do I go to a restaurant? How do I vet it? 
I get to know all the chefs around town because I call and I ask them, how can he feed me? How do I go to somebody else's house for dinner? I literally call them and say, we are so excited that we're coming to your house for dinner, but don't feel bad. I'm going to bring our own food because I have an autoimmune disease and I have 18 food sensitivities and I don't want you to have to worry about it. I'll bring plenty so anybody can try it but we'll bring our own food. And I've learned to take some of my own food in a separate container because I'm still a foodie. So my food is still delicious. It's just healthy. And nobody eats my food and goes, ooh, blah, this is healthy. I don't want to eat it. They go, wow, this is healthy. This is great. So I bought cookbooks for my entire family. So if I go to their house for dinner, they make me something from a paleo cookbook so that they know that I'm eating food that I can eat. I talk in the second book all about the importance of farmers markets, which I want to talk mm -hmm. about for you. Now, I'm lucky I live in Los Angeles and in Sedona, Arizona. So I have great farmers markets where I live. And you may not where you live because you go into winter. So you want to get food as close to the farm as possible when you have mm -hmm. farmers markets. And if you're a foodie, you'll get all kinds of great food there because that's where foodies go mm -hmm. to find great food that's mm -hmm. healthy. But when it's summertime, for God's sake, shop at your farmers market. If it's not, mm -hmm. find a co-op, join a CSA box, um, hire a company called Misfits yeah. or Imperfect yeah. Produce who will deliver farm mm -hmm. fresh, just picked produce to you. Get it? freeze it. If it's frozen, it maintains all yeah. its nutrients. Mm -hmm. So there are ways around the fact that you can't get to a farm, but this is why it's so important. You want to get the nutrients as close to when that piece of product was picked as possible, because something like spinach loses 30% of its phytonutrients within the first day that it's picked. So Think about it. If it was grown in Chile, how much do you think it still has in it that's good for your body? Mm -hmm. Do you still want to eat organic produce even if it comes from Chile? Yes, if that's your only option. But try to get it closer to when it was picked because that's when you're going to get the prime nutrients in your body. You need to eat all the colors close together because there's a synergy that happens when you eat the rainbow. They have a little party. And they dance and they say, "Ooh, this is really starting to feel good. And your brain clears up and you think better and you have more energy and your personality evens out and you feel like a million dollars because all those phytonutrients are doing their job. When I started this research 10 years ago, they knew about 6,000 phytonutrients. They now know about 25,000 phytonutrients. They don't have a clue what all of them do, but they know that most of them are there because they do something that enhances health in our bodies. So you want to be eating that. And if you get away from the processed food and the sugar, you get your taste back, buds back. Mm -hmm. And so real food starts to taste amazingly good. And while you're eating all that processed stuff, you're not giving your body any nutrients. So if you have a weight issue, it's holding on to every little morsel that you gave it. It doesn't want to give it up. So if mm -hmm. you give that up and you start eating real food, your body goes, whoa, I'm getting lots of nutrients. I've lost 65 pounds without dieting, only because I'm eating clean. And I got to tell you, I hated counting calories. I started mm -hmm. every diet on the New York Times bestseller list. I couldn't lose weight. <laughs> but there's something else that happens to your body I had no idea about. We have two little hormones called ghrelin and leptin, mm -hmm. and they control our appetite. Who knew? So I was beating myself up for willpower all the time. Had nothing to do with willpower. Mm -hmm. I was addicted to the food I was eating, mm -hmm. and it was snuffing out my two hormones that controlled my appetite. Right. It also mucks around with all your feel-good hormones. Mm -hmm. So when you give up all those chemicals and all that, and I literally call it crap, carbonated, refined, artificial, and processed, when you give up that crap, you get back all your good hormones. Your GABA comes back. Your dopamine comes back. Your serotonin, which they thought was only made in the brain, is really made in the gut. And that's your real feel-good hormone. So you start feeling great all the time and your personality is lighter because your mood is lighter because your body's functioning the way it's supposed to. So there are so many pluses to eating real food. There are toxins in places in your life other than your food, but start there. Yeah.
this is great information and yeah. we're going to talk more. I want, I want people to know where they can um, get in touch with you. Uh, and there's also um, a workbook that you have that goes with this book. I'd like to right, talk right. a little bit about that. So people, because this is overwhelming. Hey, everybody, you are listening to, and that's when I realized I'm Susan Dolce. I'm here with Leon Dyer. Today, we are interviewing integrative health coach, Cheryl Meyer. We're talking about toxins, toxic load in our, in our diets and how it affects all aspects of our lives. And um, one of the things you mentioned uh, a few segments ago was you were talking about the standard American diet. Also, you would call it the sad diet. And um, I think, you know, there are some people who are like, what does that mean? You know, um, the American right. diet versus does that mean that there's a European diet and that there's a, yeah. <laughs> so kind if of, you could, but... yeah. Uh, the standard American diet actually is eaten all over the world now. So mm -hmm. the Europeans do eat a little cleaner than us. What I mean by that is if anything that comes in a box is processed, it's the part of the standard American diet, it has chemicals in it. All mm -hmm. those words you can't pronounce or don't know what they are, they're not good for you. They're not adding anything positive to your body and they could very likely be doing damage to your body. MSG is an example. I think most of us know that MSG is not good for us. It's now on boxes under 39 different names because the food industry doesn't want us to know that's what's in there. It also includes all the processed boxed frozen foods that we buy. And believe it or not, when we go to restaurants, they're now buying their food in little baggies mm -hmm. and zapping mm -hmm. them. So it includes all that food. So what is a clean diet? It's where you're using whole food ingredients and you're cooking it yourself. So yep, you're giving up some of the convenience but as a result, you're feeding your body for your future health, and it makes all the difference in the world. I just reviewed a book that I read last year called How Not to Die. <laughs> he was a medical doctor whose granny was given three weeks to live. Everything in her body hurt, and she decided, uh-uh. She got rolled into Pritikin in her wheelchair, and six weeks later, she danced out because she mm. had eaten a whole foods diet. And then she lived many years. And he was a conventional doctor that went, whoa, there's something here that I need to learn. So he has all the evidence that's based about why you need to eat whole foods in one handy book that is packed with great mm -hmm. information. One of the things that hit my attention yesterday is heart disease starts at 10 years old. They did a study where they looked at the arteries of 10-year-olds mm. and 100% of them already had streaks of fat in their arteries, which meant that they were already, and 54% of our kids already have some kind of chronic illness. So this is important and you can reverse it. That's his point. You can reverse it if you turn to a plant-based diet. Now, that does not mean I don't eat what I call clean meat. What is clean meat? It's animals that eat what they were put on this earth to eat in the first place. They eat their species specific diet. So a cow has two bellies. He's here to eat grass. So you want him to be grass fed and grass finished because mm -hmm. otherwise he's getting GMO corn and his body can't process it. And what he eats, you eat. Mm -hmm. Lambs only eat grass, they're easy. Bison, pretty much they're not feeding them a lot of the GMO feed, but you wanna make he's a sure he's a grass fed buffalo. Um, chickens, you want free run. You want pastured, you want organic and you want organic eggs. You don't want cage free because you're getting all their stress hormones because of the horrible way that they're being they're allowed to live. So you want guys that are out there, chickens that are out there eating twigs and berries mm -hmm. and bugs because then they taste better. They're healthier. And when you eat them, you're healthier. Yeah. Turkey's the same thing. You want pastured turkey. Um, if you cook, then you've taken a giant step towards the health of you and your family because you can control what you're eating. Now, I'm not telling you you need to be Julia Child. You can cut up vegetables, put them on parchment paper and roast them 
and then eat them. And that does the trick because you're eating real phytonutrients. And what does all the colors of the rainbow? What's a purple vegetable? Believe it or not, big food, big agriculture has taken all of our great seeds and culled them down to things not chosen for nutrition, not chosen for taste, but chosen so that he can make the flight from Chile to us and not be dead by the time it gets to our shelves. So there's all kinds of heirloom varieties that you're only going to find at farmer's markets. Tomatoes come purple. Cauliflower comes purple. There's all these colors that come in our vegetables, and I would love to see us continue them. So because diversity is good for our guts and variety is good for our guts. Mm -hmm. So if you shop at a farmer's market, it's real easy to eat the rainbow because there are all kinds of colors and all kinds of food you didn't even know existed. I saw you did a... a, a uh, um... Uh, Instagram post, I believe, I think you showed like all three different colors of cauliflower and right. it was, which one yeah. was the most nutritious. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah and it's, I not wish I, it's not white. It's not white. It's actually the purple because yeah. purple as a color is loaded with um, antioxidants, which are cancer fighters. And understand these phytonutrients are in these plants to protect them. Clint doesn't know he's protecting us. He's growing them because it's healthy for him. But by eating them, they have all these incredible benefits for our body. Um, nature is really a marvelous place. I even discovered that trees let go of chemicals because the mother tree protects her children for the rest mm -hmm. of her life. And the chemicals that she releases will warn them about bugs coming. They will protect them. And some of the chemicals she releases are cancer fighting for us. So if we get into the woods and we just sit there and soak in all these incredible chemicals, she's not releasing them for us, but they do us all kinds of benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and she transfers food through her roots and through the fungi on her roots. And well, some trees even I have, just, sorry, go I, ahead. I, I, my husband and I just watched this documentary on mushrooms and how healing mushrooms, the fungi are, it's fascinating that their cells are almost identical to our cell makeup in our bodies. And that almost anything that, we have an, you know, um, a condition or something that we need to correct within our, ourselves, mush, the mushroom world has something to... Yeah, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what mm. this marvelous planet has to mm. offer us for yeah. health and how complex it is. For them to now know that there's 20,000 phytonutrients when only 10 years ago they thought there were 6,000. Mm -hmm. you, you can imagine how much there is still to learn, mm -hmm. but utilize it and take advantage yeah. of it as they learn it because it's all good for your body and for your children. Um, you're not gonna go to the doctor and get a magic pill. Pills giveth and they taketh away. They do something that mitigates whatever your health problem is, but it's not solving it. It's not curing it. Whereas if you start eating real food and cooking, one of the things Dr. Greger of the How Not to Die book talks about is you can actually take your disease and reverse it. And that was stunning to him. You can mm -hmm. reverse heart disease. I interviewed someone for my podcast who had a big why to reverse his heart disease at 42. He had two babies. And he said, people are always asking him, what's the magic pill? And he said, you are. Mm -hmm. You have to be your own magic pill. You have to make the lifestyle changes. And it's not, it's, it's the same whether it's heart disease or cancer or autoimmune disease. You have to eat phytonutrients of all the colors. You have to move your body. You have to do something about your stress. You have to breathe. There was a book that came out last year called Breathe. He went all the way back over history to talk about how we've forgotten how to breathe. You want to make sure that you're eating the right fats. We need omega-3 fats. What's in the standard American diet? All omega-6 fats. Omega-6 fats aren't bad for us, but we're completely out of balance. They should be one-to-one -one and they're 10 to one. So concentrate on your omega-3 oils. What are they? Olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, um, butter but I need organic butter because there's hormones and antibiotics and all kinds of crud in your dairy. 
Um, so you need to be aware of what's in your food and you are worth it. Only give yourself the best possible food. Now, organic meat is more expensive. So what do I do to, to make up for that? I eat a lesser amount. I only eat as much as the palm of my hand because the quality meat will do more good for my body than eating that stuff with all mm. of those chemicals in it. So adjust so that you can mm -hmm. fit it into your budget. You need to start feeding your body like you are as important as everything else is in your life. Because if you don't feed your own body, you're not gonna be here for anybody else. So start with you and then educate your family and your children why you're feeding them good food because they're like little pitchers. Whatever you do is what they will grow up and do. And that's where their memories will be. And mm -hmm. um, talking about kids just real quick, they don't know where our food comes from anymore. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a city, but my mother used to take me to pick strawberries and take me to the farm so that we would pick vegetables. There are places, there are farms all over this country where you can go pick your own. And it's important because I started researching this because I read an article that most people think chocolate milk comes from chocolate cows. <laughs> Seven million people in the United States believe that. I want to get myself a chocolate cow. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and so we believe that avocados are laid from animals. We're too far away from our food source. So we're not recognizing how important that food source that we're getting our food from is. So I, I have a question um, for both of you because Leon grew up on a farm. Yeah. And um, and you you did grow up eating, you know, you 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 guys grew your own vegetables. You have many stories about the root cellar. <laughs> oh my goodness. And yes. and your father was a dairy farmer for a while. And um, so like you you grew up eating pretty clean right mm -hmm. um yes. and 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 i'm sure you carried that over into when you were raising your family like i'm sure you you know cooked for your family and or did you yeah. i mean was there yeah oh there was oh definitely i um my children before it was even like let me think alex was born in the well both kids were born in the 90s so the early 90s for alex and I did not purchase baby food. One, because um, we couldn't afford it, to be quite honest. Um, and two, when I would taste it, it didn't taste like food. <laughs> so I was like, I can't feed this to him. And then when um, I had our daughter five years later, four years later, um, I just continued that. But, um, but in that same time frame, I started experiencing, because I was a young mom, in the middle of America, not near a farm, I started with the box, the box items, and they became convenient. And we would go through the drive-thru because it was easier to put two kids in the car and go through the drive-thru or order a pizza and have it delivered. So I fell into that. Well, and um, we do. We're addicted to the convenience as well as to the chemicals that are in that food. Well, but if you start to cook- too. Yeah. Well, if you there not were, necessarily, if you get a rhythm it, and yes. you you make multiple meals at the same time and freeze them, there are ways to save money as you're preparing food. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and you get a rhythm so that if you start to cook your own food, I can make a meal as fast as I can jump in the car and go get fast food. Yes. Um, I get it, go in the morning, I take something out of the freezer that's gonna be my protein source. I always have great vegetables already cleaned and ready to go on the eye level shelf in my refrigerator. So if I'm hungry and I open up the door, that's what I'm gonna pick from because it's ready to go. So I know I'm gonna pick my vegetables from there to make my salad or to make my vegetable or whatever. There are ways to do it so that I can put a meal on the table in half an hour. It'll take me longer than that to jump in the car and go for fast food. Yeah, Only especially now where I'm getting I live. a good yeah. meal. <laughs> and with baby food, they just came out with a study that they're loaded with heavy toxic metals. So I have I just wrote an article for Mom's Choice that they've got to make their own food because kids, by the time a child is seven, he has five pounds of toxins in his body. You have a you have a statistic too about how many chemicals are in the umbilical cord. 
287 is the average. And so in my second book, I have a whole section on parenting. And when you want to conceive, you start a year ahead of time so that you are only eating clean food because you don't want to pass 287 chemicals to your child. That's why our kids have so many allergies today. They're starting out with a significant toxic load right out of the hopper. And that's why so many of our kids have chronic illness. It's frightening. Well, and, and, and emotional, I mean, oh yeah, and, and the emotional, not just our children, but I mean, look, I mean, through the stages, I mean, we're in midlife right now and knowing how I was raised and then, then how I started to eat. And then, I mean, the amount of um, uh, mental illness that is happening currently. And, and believe world. it or not, a lot of that is nutrition because mm -hmm. what we feed ourselves feeds our brain. They used to think brain cells didn't regenerate. Every cell in our body regenerates. That's why we need all these beautiful phytonutrients. And our brains are no different. But depression, it's not totally. There are things that happen that are traumas to people in people's lives. But if you're having a problem with mood swings and depression, change how you eat. Focus on eating all those beautiful phytonutrients because they will make you happier. They will raise your mood and they will improve your mental illness. It all starts in the gut. So um, I know I mentioned this before. I definitely want to get cover this. And that's, um, I got you know, the book, like, um, it's, it's, so this is for the next show, um, big book. very, it's, it's the Bible. It's the Bible mm -hmm. on, on toxins and people and, keep it next to their bedstead because they look up mm -hmm. stuff in it all the time. Yeah. I mean, it really is the resource. Like, I mean, you know, you cover everything, like you mentioned from cosmetics to laundry detergent to, uh, uh, hygiene products. I mean, you, you have done all of the research, but if somebody is looking at this and they're saying, I don't know where to start. Yeah, they're going to go, oh, my God. Well, my very first beta user of my book was a mom who had five children and she has 20 grandchildren. And she went through her kitchen and threw all her husband's favorite food out the first day and almost created World War Three. So we backed up and I said, OK, you cannot do that. It took me five years to remove all these toxins. So I created a workbook. If you buy my book, my email address is in the book. You write to me, I will mail you, email you the workbook. You do not throw it all away. You start and you identify what needs to go. And then you figure out what you're going to buy when you run out of the old icky thing. You've been using that old icky thing for all these years. You're not going to throw it out. But you are going to know what you're going to replace it with because you're going to write it in the workbook and you're going to put that into a binder so that you have at your fingertips what you're going to replace it with. And if it's a toxic cleaning chemical or like the, the where would I start to not buy it right away is those little pots that you do your dishes and your laundry in. They are so toxic that if a toddler were to pick it up and eat it, you probably can't get them to the emergency room. They're that toxic. But if you have other things in canisters, put them into a bin, take them out to your garage, bring them in when you're cleaning with them and then take them back out because they're off gassing. Mm. And the, the statistic is that the air in our homes is like 50 times worse than the air outside. Now, mind you, I live in LA. That's a huge statement. But you want to be very protective of your air on the inside. And one of my big shocks was that fragrances whether they're in your cleaning supplies, they're in your plugins, or that you're spraying on your body, they are incredibly toxic, including the one that you spray to take all those yeah. other smells out of your ear. It's poisoning you. That ad well, where she's smelling her laundry and going into apoplexy is making me nuts <laughs> because she's poisoning herself every time she yeah. does that. I was, oh my God, that's, this is a, I wanted to jump in really. Um, my aunt um, had um, four cats and oddly enough, three of them were experiencing seizures and it was the, the plug-in, the, the plug-in that she, um, like the odor, but it was the cat odor one to take away the smell of the cat and the chemical in that was causing the seizures. My second book has an entire section about pets because I lost yeah. all three of my cats while I was busy researching for myself. It hadn't occurred to me that their food now was completely genetically mm -hmm. modified and that all of the chemicals in my house were bothering them only their little bodies couldn't handle them. Mm -hmm. 
And so I knew I lost them all. So before Mm -hmm. I got new kitties, I wanted to figure it out. When you find out what's in pet food today, it's enough to make you nuts. But it's all spelled out at any price point. I give you all kinds of resources where you can decide what the best level of food Mm -hmm. you can feed your pet is at your budget level. Um, I don't want to make those decisions for you, but I give you all the resources so that you can make them. All kinds of house plants are toxic for pets, different ones for dogs than for cats. So you want to get those out of there. Some essential oils are bad for cats and some are bad for dogs. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can go and find all that information for your pets. I'm a cat and a pet fanatic. So I never wanted to do that again. So before we, we, start ending the show um i know a lot of people out there are saying well wait a minute we have if it's so bad why is it on the shelf why are we not seeing the research why are um we're seeing that the fda says it's okay to eat da 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 so i know this is a big topic and this is probably for another show but can you let's just yeah let I'd everyone to, get mad. I got angry uh, yeah. when I started yeah. researching yeah. why wasn't my government protecting me mm-hmm. and one of the people who came and talked to us at school was a guy named Howard Lyman who got Oprah into trouble over the cows and mm-hmm. he had a comment the only way we're going to beat that is if we all become an individual member of the army So I call on everybody, if we stop buying this stuff, they'll stop making it because there's too much money. Our our senators, our congressmen, they're taking money. They're they're the ones who passed all these rules to allow GMOs with all their horrible toxins to get into our food supply. Mm -hmm. You cannot count on them protecting you. You have to own it. And there's an Institute for Responsible Technology who says only if 5% of us change you'll start to see the products available change. And in the 10 years I've been doing this, there was only one cosmetic company when I started that was totally clean that I could find. Now there's all kinds of options because we're refusing to buy that toxic stuff. Mm -hmm. The first legislation was passed on anything for cosmetics two years ago, but it's still, they are allowed to, to monitor themselves. How well do you think that's working? Um, So you need to know what you're putting on your skin. You need to know what you're buying. And there's a couple of apps now for skin products and personal care products. One is by EWG. It's called Skin Safe. And the other one, I'll get you the name so you can put it in the show notes. I use the EWG stuff because I support them because they were all that was available when I started researching. But there are, so you don't have, their database is not easy to look things up in, but it's worth it. And I've learned from an environmental expert, you start at the bottom of the list Mm. and work up until you hit Mm. something toxic. And if it's that toxic, you get it out of your house and you start looking for something to replace it. That way you don't have to look up everything because the smallest amount, the lowest on the list is the smallest amount. And if it's that toxic, trust me, you're going to run into them higher on the list. So Cheryl, where can everybody find you? Okay. The base word is Cheryl M. Health Muse. Cheryl with a C, M like Mary, health, and then Muse, M-U-S-E, because I want to inspire you to live a healthier life. So yes. that's why I chose that. Dot com is my website loaded with great information. Go noodle around in there. My Facebook page and my Instagram are Cheryl M. Health Muse. And so you can find me there. I do have a private group on Facebook called Feeling Good. I'd love to have you all join me. We talk all things health from gratitude to stress to food. Um, and so just follow me. And okay. if you, as you, if you start to write the book and you have questions, write to me, I want you to win yeah. at 72. So, yeah. I'm doing this because I want to help other people. I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, we have, we have a final note. We have a sticky note. We're at the, we're at the yes. top of the hour and the top of- we have a sticky note that I think Cheryl's going to laugh at. What's our sticky note for today, <laughs> Leon? Our sticky note, our, our little hint for our, for all of us, you are what you eat. So don't eat fast, cheap, easy, or fake. I love that. Yes. <laughs> this has been a wealth of information oh, as always. Thank you, Cheryl, for being on the show with us today. Thank you um, for having me again. It's been fun. 
And, mm-hmm. and if, if there's any crossover listeners, I'm going to have Cheryl on, on um, the Awakened Parent Project when we're talking about um, uh, children's nutrition and toxins for children. So thank you again. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here with us today on And That's When I Realized. We are here to shed some light on the misconceptions around midlife by sharing real life stories and a fresh perspective. Look, we know it's not easy. The change is constant and inevitable. Let's explore what it means to move through challenges with a dose of humor and embrace each challenge, each new discovery with a higher sense of understanding. We hope you heard something today that made you laugh and recognize the truth and comedy of midlife. See you next time.